Hey everybody, we have a new exciting tool that has been uh, created by the Crafty Housewife Yarn staff just in time for the kickoff of Tour de Fleece 2021. So we're really excited and <laughs> this was actually Brittany Bender's idea who is kind of our office manager as well as the uh, director of My Local Wool. So, she, you know, we work together all the time and she usually makes these gorgeous, like big crazy art yarns is what she's known for. You can find her on Instagram, uh, B Rit Fiber Arts, it's got like a little B. <laughs> so she has recently gotten onto a kick, she said, of wanting to uh, kind of set more technical spinning goals of spinning thinner and really looking at twist and wraps per inch and all that sort of thing. And so her and Jessie, um, who's also one of our staff members, found the perfect people to make the perfect thing. And uh, so I really had nothing to do with this except being excited about it. But I wanted to show you, we have these cool little tools, which <clears throat> I mean, we are by no means the first people to ever <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> dream these up. So this is like not, you know, like groundbreaking to the fiber arts industry, but we're excited about them because these are ours and they have our logo. And uh, I wanted to show you just kind of a breakdown on how these work. If uh, you're like me and you just kind of jumped in full force into spinning and never looked back on like remotely worrying, uh, <laughs> like y'all are gonna laugh at me. These came in and I had to like email on our like staff group. I'm like, they're so cool. Now I have to figure out how to use them. Cause uh, you know, I'm just fly by the seat of my pants on this. So this has been a fun learning experience for me. And I had some pretty yarn here that I just spun up that is fun. And it is a uh, sorry silk in, oh man, Shetland maybe? I have totally forgotten and now I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I will have to look up the tag. It did, this is a beautiful blend and they had a couple different that looked similar, which is why my brain is not working from Get Bins Farm, which is uh, one of my new favorite things I have found in the fiber world, thanks to uh, working in, uh, well, I say working and owning mylocalwool.com. <laughs> this was one of our farmers, Get Bins, uh, B-E-N-T-Z. Um, and you can find them on my local wool. And I am newly obsessed with this fiber, so which is what I've spun. And I'm going to show you how to use a, uh, whether it is ours or someone else's little tool like this. So. Here you go. Okay, so first thing, uh, like I said, one thing I like about this one that I've seen that some of the other ones on the market I have not seen on is I like that it came with this handy dandy little chain because, uh, and of course you could put it on many different places on your wheel for storage. But um, when I was spinning on my Echo, I just put it on the Lazy Kate and then you could easily drop it out of the way. You could put it down on the bottom one. So there are many different ways places that you could hang this from this little cord to always keep it with your wheel. Um, and as you see, it matches Spinolution the woods on the Spinolution perfectly. So if that matters to you, it matches. But what, where's my bobbin? So you will notice that this is a uh, 16 ounce bobbin and that this clearly did not get spun on this wheel, but I wanted to uh, shoot this video on this wheel because it's sitting here. So these are, you know, so don't be confused by the uh, bobbin size not matching here. But what you're going to do is basically you have this section here, which as you can guess is an inch. So for all of, uh, you know, those wraps per inch terminology and this yarn, like all of my yarns are slightly thick and thin, but to check your wraps per inch, you would line this up in the little groove, which is exactly an inch, and it makes it really easy to wrap them on here and then kind of squish them over. <laughs> and you don't want to uh, pack it on here. Oh, sorry, this is the end of the yarn, so it's coming apart on me. The idea is that you want to wrap this on here and you have to pull off enough yarn to actually do this correctly. So we'll pull this down here. But you don't want to wrap it like super duper tight because that's kind of like cheating and you'll get more wraps on there than you necessarily would for checking your size. So you just kind of want to do this nice and even 
to wrap this around. This is, of course, loads easier to do when you're not filming yourself. Because anything you do, I have found, especially if you're me and you're filming yourself, is always way harder than if you don't. So I did this a minute ago without filming myself. So see, you wrap it, and you want it to just be, like, nice and, you know, like, tight, but not, like, crazy tight. So you wrap that on here, and when it looks like it's a comfortable, not pulled super tight, but not, you know, like, there's not a lot of space uh, wraps, then you can count them, and then that is a really easy way to figure out your wraps per inch. So I did this a minute ago, and it was 15 to 16 wraps per inch, which means that this would be, if you look up your guide on that, which I believe we even have one. Um, I'm pretty sure we have one. I think that was one of the bonuses from the uh, Dream Yarn course that is now just on Patreon. So I believe we even have a uh, handy dandy cheat sheet on wraps per inch because I could never remember. But I do know, because I just looked it up, that 15 to 16 wraps per inch is roughly like sport weight. So it's considered fine, but not super fine. And, uh, you know, roughly sport weight. So, or DK, somewhere in there. And mine, of course, vary. So that is how you use this section for the wraps per inch. Okay, so then the back side, oh, where's the camera? There's the camera. The back side, and this is super awkward the way I'm having to hold this with the camera, um, has your S twist and your Z twist. And that's another one of those things that I never really paid too much attention to. But basically, if you spin it clockwise, which is how I spin, then you're going to get what is called a Z twist, which is kind of a weird way of saying that the twist looks like it's pointing kind of like a Z. And then if you two-ply it, or if you just happen to spin the other direction, it's you get what's called an S-twist, which is kind of a weird way of saying that it's like pointing that way. So Z pointing this way, S pointing that way. And that is the uh, reason it's called Z or uh, S-twist. And this little tool, this uh, little guide here, let me wind all my yarn back onto my bobbin, um, shows you the degrees so if you were this is where Brittany was talking about and we may do this with a uh, tour de fleece of trying to hit like hey i want more twist or i want to go for a z twist you know this is where you can get into like really trying to hit individual goals so some of us are just kind of spinners for relaxation and it's like it's gonna be what it is and then other people it can be really fun for like a uh challenge both for spinning and your mind to come up with kind of different techniques for spinning. And so the way you use this to check your twist is, okay, so I know I spun this clockwise, so I know, I already know that I'm going to be over here on the Z-twist side. And I don't know if you can see this or not. You can see, what I'm trying to do is basically look at the degree of twist that's coming, that's, you know, around this. So, like, as it's barber pulled around, you know, if it's really tight barber poles that are, like, super pointing, you know, like, if the twist is really, really tight, it's going to be, like, wrapped really, really tight, and the twist is going to be coming off at a real severe angle. If your twist is looser then it's going to be more, you know, upright, like a woolen sort of, you know, a nice pull that way. So basically, from my understanding, the tighter your twist, the more you're going to be on this side. And the looser your twist, the more you're going to be towards the middle. And then I guess there's neutral twist, if you, uh, for whatever reason, wanted to try to shoot for neutral twist. So I don't think you can really see, but... If I look at this, you can look at the grain on this, and it lines up. You're just trying to move this this way. So, see, when I first saw this, I was imagining doing something where, like, you hold it in the middle and then do this, like, to me, like a Geiger counter. <laughs> like, that's what I was imagining. That's not what you're doing. You're not doing that and doing an angle, so don't do that. that that's what I was doing. What you're doing is you're kind of sliding the whole thing. And this is how I had to do it. So you kind of slide the whole yarn until the angle of the fibers on here match up most with 
what's on here. So you're not going like this, you're going like this. And if you do that, it's actually really easy to be like, oh, I'm probably at about 55. I'm definitely, my twist is somewhere between 50 and 60 on this, which uh, I don't really, did not have a goal for this particular twist. <laughs> and uh, that seems, since I knew I was going to be on the Z side of it, so I'm just ignoring this whole other side. So if I'm just looking at the Z side of it and I'm hitting somewhere in the 50, then I'm going to say that's good. I'm going to say that's right in the middle. That's the, the middle path is usually what I'm shooting for. Uh, you know, I guess when it comes to yarn twist or margaritas or, you know, whatever. So we're shooting for the middle path makes me happy. And that looks like right where I've lined up. So I'm going to call this one uh, a victory. So, but if you were trying to shoot for one way or the other, then, um, you know, you could easily gauge it that way. And last, but certainly not least, you may have noticed there are four different sized little holes on this thing. And it can be used as a diz, which, full disclosure, this is a tiny little hole. You'd have to have, like, one of those tiny little crochet hooks to get any fiber through that. And, uh... As y'all know, I don't operate in the tiny little fiber uh, aspect of life. I like thicker stuff. So I defaulted, um, <laughs> I went ahead and defaulted to the bigger hole down here. And uh, once again, this would be way easier if you had a, um, like a little crochet hook. But I was trying to do this on the, I'm not going to have a little crochet hook randomly hanging on my spinning wheel. But I would have this, uh, thing with the little chain, my handy dandy little tool hanging on my spinning wheel. So I tried to do this without having to have a hook. So I just picked the biggest of the holes and this is some absolutely beautiful uh, wool. It's actually alpaca from Cedar View Farm, which they have lovely work. And I'm once again spoiled because this was uh, some that I poached from a My Local Wool Box. So you can tell that that happens often around here. <laughs> So it's good to be me. So this beautiful alpaca fiber came from them. And you can find Cedarville Farm on Cedar View Farm, I'm sorry, on mylocalwool.com. But what I would do is if you wanted to run this through as a diz, I kind of just took a little part of the fiber. And of course this fiber is already beautiful and behaving very well. So I guess I would imagine this in more of a uh like a bat or a larger amount of fiber, but this was the fiber I had laying around to show you. But like I said, this fiber is basically already pencil roving. So before everybody gets on here and is like, why is she doing this with what's already really great fiber? I'm aware people, I'm just trying to show the people that have never seen this, what's up with these holes. So you can use the holes. And like I said, obviously this is already beautiful fiber, but, and we will be, spoiler alert, doing more with a diz here soon so more dizzing to come but this could definitely be used for if you were wanting if you had like a larger chunk of fiber that was not this already beautiful alpaca like a larger bat and you were wanting to kind of like let's say you wanted to do some like super thin super fine well-behaved spinning and you got like twist goals and like all the stuff this is a good method if you kind of go through and it, think of this as like pre-drafting and like I said, this is not the best thing to show you with because it's already basically pre-drafted. But using a uh, this as a diz is allowing you to kind of get this pre-drafted. So, you know, imagine that this is not already lovely and that you could use this tool. And this is where, I mean, you know, you could have, and then you just pull it apart into sections to spin from. But if you wanted, you could use one of these really tiny little holes, which I don't think I would with alpaca because it's already got short fibers and might fall apart, but you can use these holes for a diz, and this video isn't about using a diz, but that's what the four holes can also be used for. So in this one little doohickey, if you happen to have something similar to this laying around your house, you can do wraps per inch in this part. You can use the holes for different size dizzes for pre-drafting your fiber. And then if you want to investigate what type of twist you are doing, you can go for Z or S. And if you two-plied something, which y'all know I love some bulky two-ply, instead of being over here on the Z, because I spin clockwise and I ply counterclockwise, then you could check out your twist for your two ply 
by just lining up the twist of your two ply over here. So that is what all things you can do with this one tool.